Good morning and welcome to Recipe for Success. My name is Nancy Giacalone and I happened to be in the kitchen one day have no idea what I was making, but I was making something important. And it came to, I started thinking about it and I'm like, you know, no matter what it is that you make, there's always one ingredient or technique that's really critical to the outcome of whatever it is that you're making. And the more I thought about that, I thought, you know what? The same thing is true in life and in business. So today, my very special guest is Gregory Jerome, and we're gonna talk about the power of image. In full transparency, I ran across him on LinkedIn and stalked him for a little while because um, he was putting something out there that I wasn't seeing and really resonated with me. He was talking about how important style was and not, you know, fancy designer style, but really how it helps you make an impression. And with a background in with his background, he was also talking about the psychology of it. So that really resonated with me. And I hunted him down and said, hey, will you come on here? Because I think it's an important um, subject to talk about. So I'm really thrilled to have uh, Gregory Jerome with us this morning. I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell everybody a little bit about your history. Well, first of all, Nancy, thank you very much for allowing me to be here uh, on this platform with you to be able to share what I do um, in the profession. And so I'm a principle-centered style coach. I actually help empower people by helping them become more aware of their own heroism with vitality and morale, boosting their confidence in every day and also in their professional life as well. My background consists of business marketing management, psychology, behavioral science and ethics, as well as organizational communication. And so I use these uh, to help organizations and individuals to really think about how their brand expression is presented to not only themselves, but to their clients. Well, you know, I think that organizations spend a lot of time, effort, money on what their logo looks like, what their marketing looks like, but they don't think about how their people are actually part of their brand and how that can carry forward. Correct. They, I think the focus when people think about marketing, they just think about the brand colors, logos, think, things of that nature. But when you really think about it, the, the most essential marketing piece are going to be your employees because they present themselves uh, to future clients. So now you have to think about client retention. How do you obtain those clients? Can you increase your sales by the representation of your employees? Because a lot of what I've experienced now, especially during this time of re-entering society after COVID, there's been a decrease in customer experience due to the brand expression and representation of their employees because it also plays a part in their behaviors and even their communication uh, i couldn't agree with you more so and again that's one of the things that caught my attention about you was because you were putting that message out that i believed in and i was hearing somebody else say it but during covid and rightfully so people were working from home and so they just kind of let all of that traditional professional attire mm -hmm. go by the wayside. But I, I don't, I'm, don't know about you, but for me at least, when I put on professional work outfit and I'm ready to go see a client or do something, my mindset changes from mm -hmm. jeans and a sweatshirt to a suit or a dress or, you know, a nice pair of slacks and a blouse. It yeah. doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to express your intention. At least that's kind of how I see it. I agree. It's everything should be based on intention anyway, no matter if you're doing things in a personal or professional space. Being able to this is the this is the main thing I, I, I help people to understand, because there's a lot of thoughts or I should say a lot of um, ideas behind the way that you present yourself is superficial that 
clothes doesn't matter or the way I present myself doesn't matter. In fact, it actually does. Because I think I think from this very unique space, which what I've now identified, the peacock effect. So when we think about the peacock, you know, we they try to attract a, a mate, simple and plain. What we do every day, we try to attract if there is going to be a romantic partnership or if there's going to be business so we can make sales. So either way, we're trying to attract things to us versus trying to chase things. So if we understand the way that I present myself, it can also represent integrity. It can also represent uh, trust. So these are the things that are the nonverbal communication points that people forget that this is what this presents to you. You don't, you don't find a partner by going through a room and saying, oh, they have a beautiful personality. I, I, love, I love the way they, they have morals and values. Like we see things, that's human animal instinct first. Princeton did a study last year where it takes now like seven seconds for a person to judge you. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very true. I know that, um, well, it was a long time ago, but when I first started my business, I was working out of my house for about five years and, and people would tease me about the fact that I literally got up, I put on work, you know, nice work clothes, high heels, the whole nine yards, and went into my little home office and worked yeah. there. And I, and I actually had a little, I would go down to the local coffee shop and get a cup of coffee and come back to my office. It was just, it helped me frame my mindset for how I wanted to be during that time that I had allocated for work. So mm -hmm. um, I, I completely agree with all of that. Um, we'll get into a little bit more about this in a minute, but I kind of want to go back and I want to talk about your background a little bit because a lot of times people think I can't afford to have style or, you know, that's, that's for other people. That's not for me. I don't need it. But you didn't come from a privileged background by any stretch of the imagination and you still found that style really had an impact. So can you tell us a little bit about your backstory? Yeah. Growing up, a single family home uh, with two other siblings. I was raised, we were raised by my mother. Uh, didn't have a lot of uh, resources then. Uh, didn't wear the name brand anything. She didn't believe in it anyway. She would rather put food on the table than name brand clothes. So uh, so with that being said, uh, we, we shopped at random places. To, to gather clothes. But for me as an individual, I'm a creative artist. I'm, I'm very eccentric. Uh, I, I draw, I paint, I write music. I, I do all these creative art things. And so I had a challenge with really identifying who I was as an individual growing up as a kid, because I did feel like I was like the black sheep when hanging out in with my peers. And what I ended up doing was I took the creativeness inside my closet and just kind of started mixing and matching things and like creating my own style to express myself because that expression freedom of expression is my thing and that's why I feel liberated is when I can create and show the world who I truly am and it was important to me so I found myself and even with that being said moving forward from growing up into that space I got into retail as a as a young kid um 17 and i started selling sneakers so i could have name brand shoes in high school believe it or not that's how i started like upping my amp on my clothes is so i went into the business and i learned product knowledge and things like that so went from accessories women and men's clothing and then finally going into leather goods working with like coach perry ellis and just working my way up through the whole like luxury retail space. And that was a point in time in my life where I was injured in a motorcycle wreck while I was living in LA. And um, it put me in a space of becoming homeless because I was living off a of temporary disability. And I, luckily enough, you know, I, I was able to still function enough, even though I was going through physical therapy, seeing a bone specialist, seeing a neuropsychologist, and, and while I'm going through homelessness and trying to figure out a way. So I, I ended up having a suit. I had one good suit that I had when I was working for Joseph A. Bank that was tailored, 
but it was kind of worn out at this time because I was traveling with it uh, with the di temporary disability money that I had uh, received. And I ended up doing a cold call uh, to a company in Rittenhouse in Philadelphia, PA, which was a custom boutique shop, something I've never done before in my life in true custom wear. But I went in, I was able to go in and have this interview with this company and I had a hole in, in the crotch of my pants and my armpits were unraveling, the fabric was, but I pressed it the night before and I went in and the guy complimented me on it, complimented me on it. And from that point, conversations went back and forth. They flew me out to Philadelphia from Los Angeles. And after that interview, a few weeks later, they offered me a position and I was able to negotiate a 100% commission job to secure a $65,000 job uh, based off of a cold call and my representation. And so that's how that transition came for me. And it was important for me to dress that way, using my background and understanding from a mental space, I had to provide myself with that confidence to be able to go into a space that I've never been in before, to conquer it and be fearless, um, to own it because I knew what my greatness was. I seen it, I visualized it before anything had transpired. And that's how I've, I've been able to rise through the fire. Yeah, I love it. Um, my friend said true grit. Yeah, a very, very admirable. So one of the things, um, I'm going completely off script because that, that's just how my brain works. But um, okay. so one of the things that um, I've noticed again, when I think about my own, you know, personal style and my professional industry is I serve a lot of different industries mm -hmm. and I tend to adjust how I'm dressed for my client. I dress for my audience. And uh, because if I'm going, let's say to go do a meeting for a manufacturing company or a group of truckers, I will dress more casually because I don't want to feel, I want them, I want to feel accessible to them and I want them to not feel that there's a barrier and then they can't talk to me about things. Do you think that that's appropriate or do you think that people should just have a certain image, one image all the time? For me, I'm a believer in ethics. I know that's strange to talk about. Um, not for me. <laughs> when, it comes, when it comes to attire, and I'll use this as an example, and then I'll segue into what your question is. Um, I had a conversation with a young man whose daughter was going through interviews, and he was saying she's just dressing herself out of interviews, like jobs. And so, and I was like, "Well, is she dress addressing like dressing appropriately for the interviews? Like ethically, we have to think about the environments that we do go into." Right. So, to your point. When you are a brand yourself, consistency is great to be able to have that brand image wherever you go. So they know, hey, this person is about this, X, Y, and Z. Now, can you maybe tone down, maybe a level down, but still be authentic with who you are? Yes. I'll, my thing is, is being authentic is brand expression being able to show your personality with who you are and not necessarily, you know, taking yourself down a notch because the audience that you serve, because what you can end up doing is you can end up being an influence to people if you go above just a little bit of the level that they're at. I love that. I like, that's a great insight. I appreciate that. So, okay. So a lot of people think, you know, dress for success. They think about the old, you know, 50s style of dressing that means women are going to have dresses and hose and heels and men are going to be in the three-piece suits but that's not always true depending on the industry that you're in so let's mm -hmm. just talk about what it means to have a polished professional appearance once again this goes goes back to the ethics of your environment i'll use an example in the tech industry now when we think about tech a lot of people think about hoodies and jeans, t-shirts, graphic tees, you know, the air walks, like shoes, right? This is, this is what people think. And people in tech, that's pretty much what they do as well because society has placed this label on us of 
in these industries, you are supposed to dress like this. But I'm like, who gave them the, the privilege or the right to say what this is supposed to be like? Because most of the time they don't get information from a stylist about, hey, what is appropriate for this industry? How should my employees present themselves? So once again, if I'm if I'm thinking about tech, I'm thinking about how can I do maybe a short sleeve button down shirt that's not blue, black, or gray, and maybe and maybe a light jacket or a leather jacket, or if I'm more on the executive side, can I now bring in a suede jacket and you know a collared shirt and some chinos and maybe some nice upscale casual sneakers? Because now it even helps boost me to even work. Maybe I can become more creative when I work. And the same thing when you go into the, let's, let's say, sales division or even speaking engagement. Let's talk about that for a second, because I think this is very important for speakers and coaches to understand. Because I, I do speak in public speaking, so I love to hear your thought on this. This is, a, this is a challenge with a lot of speakers. They tend not to focus on how they present themselves, but more on the information that they're be providing to people. What you have to still understand is this, you are still a brand. You have to capture their attention to keep them engaged. For me, when I look at speakers, because I'm always looking at speakers, I'm, I'm looking to elevate myself in certain ways. And most of the time they're blue, black and grays because they just want to blend in. They don't want to stand out. They don't want to show personality. But for me, when I see that, I get distracted, especially if they're wearing ill-fitting clothes. I'm like, well, you don't even care about yourself. Why should I like, why should I pay attention to you? So it's, I mean, sometimes, you know, people look at these little small details about a way a person present themselves because you think about it when speakers come up, the audience most of the time are going to have a judgment of, oh, okay. Another speaker saying the same thing. And like, there's nothing to separate you from any other speaker besides probably your topic. That's it. So I think it's important for speakers, especially to really exude who they are and what they're what they're bringing to the table, because they are individuals that's bringing a message and you have to captivate them. You need to influence your audience. That's just my professional opinion. Well, I, I actually agree with that. And because um, I, it's funny because I had actually I had Googled like, what's the best what's the best um, thing for women to wear on stage? Black, 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 and sometimes gray is basically what they said. Now, I don't do that at all for any, anybody that happens to be on this call has ever seen me speak. I'm either up there in a bright green suit, a bright red yeah. suit, or, and, and part of the reason for that is because, again, at least for me, I want to draw their attention to yes. me. Yes. Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah, anytime I think of Nancy, I think of red. I mean, I, I've kind of made a point of trying to, draw that at draw that attention and people will now ask me well you're gonna wear a red dress and i'm like well of course i'm gonna wear a red dress because i mean i black dresses are gorgeous i have you know very much appreciation for them but i think especially if you're in a place where you want to draw attention to yourself such as mm -hmm. on stage i think it's important to present something that is attractive to the eye right and to and to your point about wearing bright colors this is an important thing that also needs to should be taken consideration when you're wearing bright colors or color selections. You have to understand what your undertones are as far as your skin, your skin, uh, because all bright colors doesn't work for people. No, they don't. Um, <laughs> so you really have to understand the hues of the colors when you select those, but then also the color combinations that you use. Um, so even if there's there's the consistency of red, now what shades of red are we doing? Are we doing raspberry? Are we doing cranberry? Are we doing crimson? Like, so being able to even change it up a little bit when you use those colors, right? Or how do you use complementary colors to even like help? Like if you do red and green or red and yellow, like these small accents. So like being able to, to show that personality through the combination of colors is an important thing too. 
Well, um, I have some really nice comments about, you know, people appreciate boldness. And so let's talk about how somebody would um, think about like what colors are best for them. I know that, you know, for me personally, I just simply hold it up to my face and like, is that, is that flattering or not flattering? And things that I think are going to be great. I'm like, oh God, that's terrible. But is there, but is there a way for people to kind of figure out what colors work best for them? Yeah. So, so there's, there's three different tones. There's a cool tone and then it's going to be a warm tone. And then there's going to be a neutral tone. And this works for, for no matter what culture you come from, ethnicity, like it doesn't matter. Um, one way you can do it, if you're from the fairer skin, you, you can actually look at the veins on your arm to see if they're green, right? Or if they're red, and then you're able to can tell like, hey, I'm a cool tone or I'm a warm tone. Uh, you can also use eye color and hair color as well. That's another way that you can do it. Well, I know that whenever I change my hair color, I have to change my clothes because it, it completely, I change my makeup and I change my clothes because right. I find that the same things don't look the same way. Right. On me. So, um, because I remember, oh gosh, feels like a hundred years ago, but you know, there was the color wheel, like, are you an autumn? Are you a spring? Are you a fall? Are you a winter? <laughs> and then, and they tell, they basically taught people like, you can only buy from this quadrant. And I don't think that's necessarily true, but you might want your main color to be within the most complimentary um, category. So, so with that being said, the cool tones, the cool tones and warm tones, they do have a se separate bracket. Now, the way that you use complementary colors is you use colors that are next to each other or across from each other on the color wheel. And so you use your primary colors for your skin tone, but you use the secondary colors that's opposite from your your primary color to use as small details and accents to help with that color. Oh, see, I'm learning a whole bunch. All right, I have to put my glasses on for this because I need to read something. Okay. Okay, because on your website, this is something I really liked. It says the mission on your mission on your website says, I believe in quality customer service, building trust, and establishing a rapport with clients. I understand the mental, emotional, and behavioral impacts of image. Therefore, I listen to the ideas, concerns, and needs of clients. The mission is to create a style that is authentic, that provides comfort and confidence. Um, I want to talk about this, particularly um, as it relates to a, a, a video you posted yesterday. You had helped style a gentleman, and it was a casual style. It wasn't a, it wasn't a business style. But the transformation that I saw from even in his face in the before to the confidence that he exuded in the after was amazing. So tell me a little bit about that. So the, the first, the thing for me, I'm, I'm about transparency with my clients because sometimes as a, as a personal stylist, we, we tend to get this title of, oh, well, they may think they're better than us and et cetera. And my approach is to be more of a realist uh, in that sense, to be able to really listen, active listen to what their concerns are of one, their background, that's cultural background, that's the environments they were raised in, that was goes to what words were translated to them to make them feel the way that they feel today and how they got to the place that they are. Um, and then how currently do they feel about themselves from an emotional standpoint and where do they see themselves going and what is what is the the response that they're looking for in this new space. And I, I utilize, like I utilize his background to help him, especially in the boldness of the colors. So he was, he's, his, his lineage is, is Spanish, so he's Mexican. And I was like, well, we can use some green and some yellow just to kind of like represent your heritage. And that's one thing that we did, like we utilized that and he loved it. So now it was like him really expressing who he was, but he was also in a space of depression he also was dealing in the space of being insecure. He he didn't have, you know, the response or reaction from people that he wanted. So being able to understand what he wanted to gravitate to him was a mastermind of how do we develop this for you and take all this information in 
and I use a I use a survey in mental health. They use what is called an intake, and so I do an intake with my clients to really go through the list of things that's from cognitive, behavioral, emotional, perceptual factors that goes into how they present themselves in the moment. And then we break those down and then we look for solutions. And that kind of goes into using, you know, these colors, different metaphors of color to help them in those spaces where they're having challenges. So being able to provide a, a quality customer service of setting a level of everybody is capable of receiving great service. I work for Louis Vuitton. I mean, that's the that's the pinnacle of like luxury and quality service. So anybody should be able to get that kind of service. It doesn't matter if you spend in three thousand dollars on a product on like one product, but how can you use that investment and still receive that same type of service? And the service of taking time out to really truly understand the needs and the values and your own morals and standards that you would like for yourself. And how do we create it? Yeah, I love it. Okay, so average person says, I think this sounds good. I think that I need to start developing a personal style. Most people have no idea where to start. Where do they start? To be honest, it starts here first. You have to be able to envision yourself because if, as coming from a, um, like a Christian background, it says without vision, the people perish. So if you don't have a vision, how are you gonna get to wherever you wanna get to? If there has to be a direction in order to fulfill what you're trying to fulfill. And so I'll tell first inspire people and educate people on how do, how do you see yourself? You can use a couple of tips to help you with this. You can use your peers for one. Now, who do you admire around you that looks great? We've all seen him. Women look at other women and say, you know what? That is a lovely dress she's wearing. And then sometimes the men are like, man, that's a nice suit. Oh, I like that jacket. So like, how can you use that as inspiration? You can also use, you can use art, a visual art, like from anything. You can utilize those colors and, com and combine those colors. You can use, you can use um, furniture design, home decor design magazines of like textures, fabrics, colors. Is it modern? Is it classic? So now, now we're talking about the artistic side of, of creating your style. And that's the most important thing when starting out, you have to have a vision. Yeah, I think I think you hit on something really important there. It's like when you see something that you that appeals to you, if it if it, if it strikes a chord and it, it viscerally makes you feel better, that might be a a style that you start aspiring to. I have a couple of questions. Um, this one's really great from Michael Cruz. He says, "Thanks for the info, Gregory. If I want to start changing my wardrobe, what's a safe way to get started without going over the top?" I think that's a great question. Yeah, thanks for the question, Michael. Um, this is what I say. First of all, we have to identify what your lifestyle is. That's the key key importance because you don't want to jump into an arena that like you don't even feel comfortable in. First of all, so if you're not if you're if you're not a uh, super professional, well, we may want to stay on the upscale casual, and so that's where we want to start. Well, I'm just using that as an example without going over the top, and you can. It's always great to start with your basics, which is always the blue, black, and grays, of course. But then you have to think about what are the new neutrals? Because the neutrals once before is no longer the neutrals today, right? So now it's like identifying what these new neutrals are and how do you collab with those? The other thing that I would say is the most important thing is proper fitting of your garment. I, I was I was gonna say if you're gonna start with anything, make sure it fits well. <laughs> we have to make sure it fits right because there's nothing like seeing a person with ill-fitting pants on that make them look 
too short because when your pants crunch up at the bottom, gentlemen, that is not, it's not yeah. safe. <laughs> yeah. And can, can we talk about a properly fitting t-shirt? I mean, like one of the most basic items, if your t-shirt doesn't fit well, get a different one. Please, please. And understand yeah. like, that there's different cuts for t-shirts. Yes, and there like, is. Let's talk about t-shirts for a second, because this is very important for men. And I want to make sure they get this. Please, gentlemen, stay away from crew neck shirts when wearing button up shirts. Please opt for V-necks because there's nothing like seeing a guy in a button up shirt and then you see his collar shirt under it that doesn't even match his outfit. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, another comment from Jasmine Keating. She says, it's interesting how certain types of clothings and colors can really boost someone's confidence and make them feel great. Um, so I, I have to give a special shout out to Jasmine because we were at a an event um, back in February and she had on the most spectacular dress. I just, I mean, it was, it was amazing. And it was, it was, it had multiple colors in it, but you looked around the room and your eye went directly to her nice. because of how she looked, but, but you could tell that not only did your eye go to her because she looked great, she just exuded confidence and radiance um, because she had on something that clearly fit her well and made her look amazing. Nice. And that's what, that's what it's about. Yeah. So we already covered the public speaking. Um, okay. Any mm -hmm. other tips about fit for either men or women? Because I think that's one area of style that's so often overlooked that people forget that fit is so important and fit off the rack doesn't mean that that's how it has to stay. Right. That's the, mo that's the, that's the challenge for a lot of people. So when it comes to fit, this is what I say. If you have a doctor on speed dial, if you have an attorney on speed dial, if you have that emergency contact on speed dial, the next thing you need to have on speed dial is a tailor. That's the way you're going to get your perfect fit. So if you buy something that's one size too big, you can always take it to a tailor and take in the waist, or you can get it hemmed at the bottom, or you can get the legs tapered. Like there's so much you can do. You can do tax on shirts and able to bring them in more so it fits the torso great it's so many different things that you can do when you go to a tailor that's the thing that i would say is that is the best tip in, in in all of everything when it comes to proper fit is a tailor and and i'm going to speak to women for just a, a second because it needs to fit properly through the bust there should be no gapping um at all because it's very distracting and it's not flattering at all so if you have a shirt that does not fit you properly it needs to go or it needs to be, the buttons need to be adjusted so that it doesn't gap. Yes, I, I will concur. I am not a stylist, but I will tell you that that's one thing that well, I think, I think it, it it's it really can take away from um, someone's style. Yeah, absolutely. It can. So, okay. Um, all right. We are, we just went, we're all the way to the fun part of the show. So um, Mr. Creative, I'm really, Mr. Creative, I'm very much looking forward to these answers. <laughs> Especially because you tell me you know how to cook. So I want to see what. So um, everybody gets asked this question. Um, obviously ties into the name of the show. But what is your absolute favorite food in the world? And can you cook it? I will tell you that I'm a huge fan of Ethiopian food. I'm not familiar with that. So what would be a what would be like the, your favorite Ethiopian dish? Well, there's there's a couple of different things. Uh, there's Ethiopian collard greens that they make. Um, there's also uh, sambosas. I'm a fan of lentil sambosas um, in general. And also there's like lamb. Hmm. And yes, I, I enjoy cooking that. Okay. All right. So what's the one character trait you admire most in other people and why? I would say openness, just being able to be open to new things, uh, being experimental, uh, because I think that's in, that's the space where we can really come up with new ideas and solutions for a lot of things um, dealing with us as individuals, but also in society as, as a whole. 
Yeah, I like that. All right. So now if I flip the mirror on you, what's the one character trait in yourself that you're most proud of and why? I would say I would say just being conscious. Consciousness is is because I like to think about things a lot. And sometimes I think too much, I think maybe. See, just just like that. Um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> but I think just being being conscious of of you know me as an individual and conscious of other people and and just everything around me and in, in taking inventory on how do I become better as a as a person as a being so I can be, become better for the people around me. I, I actually really appreciate that answer because I think that we as a society tend to be nervous with quiet spaces. We don't allow our ourselves time to process how we really want to respond. So I think that that's a, a, a wonderful answer. Well, thank All you. right. Okay. So again, somebody is saying, I, I love this. I want to do something about this. So what's the first thing that you would recommend that somebody should have in their closet? Women, men. Recommend to have in. So they're going to make their first purchase as far as moving forward with trying to create a style, revamp their wardrobe a bit. What would be their first purchase? I'm a person who admires foundation. <laughs> and, and I say this because whenever we build something, it starts with framework, right? If we think about a house, first you have to lay a great foundation. So for me, I would tell people your foundation pieces are going to be shoes. Because shoes can determine what style of clothes that you purchase. It can change the whole outfit. Because you can have, you can have, and I've used this as an example so they'll understand. You can you can take a pair of slacks, uh, a jacket, you know, if it's a if it's a tunic for women or if it's a button up for men, and you put on dress shoes or stilettos, it's one one style. But then if you put on some nice leather casual upscale sneakers. Now it becomes a casual, cool look. And you're still wearing the same outfit. Yeah. Um, I, when I travel, um, I plan my wardrobe around my shoes um, because I know I can only take so many shoes. So I literally plan my wardrobe around my shoes. That's it. But foundational pieces. That's the foundation. Okay. Great answer. All right. Here's a fun one because I know you're a talented guy, but what is either your secret talent or something people would be surprised to learn about you? Um, that I am a performing artist. I am a vocalist. I write, I write hip hop music and perform it for different very genres cool. of music. That's very cool. All right. Last question. Who is the one person famous or otherwise dead or alive? Doesn't matter that you would most like to sit down, have a cup of coffee, glass of wine with, and just have a conversation. Doesn't matter what time era. No, yeah, you can pick anybody. Mansa Musa. That's who I would love to have a conversation with. Why? Because he was the wealthiest man in the world at one point. And he gave a lot of it away as he traveled across many countries. So I would love to understand how he gained wealth and what inspired him to gift to other people of his own wealth. I love that. Okay, so um, for anybody that <clears throat> follows me on LinkedIn, and I know some of you do, um, please check out my post from yesterday. I shared uh, Gregory's post about the gentleman. We talked about his transformation. You've got to watch it. It's really cool. Um, but if people want to connect with you directly, what's going to be the best way for them to get in touch with you? Best way to contact me? You can always go to the website. Which is? Which is www.thegregoryjerome, T-H-E-G-R-E-G-O-R-Y-J-E-R-O-M-E.com. Okay, fantastic. And if for some reason you get off of this call and you think, can't remember what his website is, 
shoot me a message. I'm happy to connect you. I think this has been, I mean, this has been phenomenal. I so much appreciate your time. I think there were some great questions. I think everybody who um, joined us today or joins us in the future will learn a lot from it. So thank you again for your time. And for everyone else, I will see you again next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.